Hey guys. <laughs> oh my gosh. The week we have had, right? I am super excited to lead this conversation. And um, I don't take it lightly that you're showing up to listen to this. And so I'm going to kind of slow down a bit and allow people to come on into the room. Um, I'm excited just as usual to lead this conversation. And I understand that the times that we are currently in has us feeling all kinds of ways. So I wanna start with a conversation about leadership. And I wanna share my story about myself and then I'm gonna dive into some meat and potatoes that I wanna give you because I had a revelation this weekend that shifted something for me. And so what I want to do is welcome you guys all in. I see you. I see you. Um, I want to encourage you to do a couple of things. You know, you don't have to do it now, but if this begins to speak to you and as it begins to, as you, you feel led to do so, share this out with people that you feel need to hear um, and that this could possibly be encouraging to and empowering to because that is my desired goal. My desired goal is to empower you to lead in a way um, that, means something. <laughs> that's my my that's my intention for this. So share it out. Um, we're going to be talking about really your business's activism and what that really means. And so I want to just dive in again with this conversation about leadership. You know, leadership requires us to have this capacity with the dichotomy that life puts us in, right? I've talked about this before when things have come up in the world that leave me emotionally feeling drained. And then I remember I signed up to lead. So this weekend, you know, unless you've been under a rock, you know that there is high racial tension in the United States, of course, and even all over the world as people are joining in and protesting and marching um, because of one major event that just happened. And there's a, a few other ones that have happened leading up to this point and even over the years. But the major event, um, and I'm going to call it like I see it, the murder of George Floyd by a police officer um, in plain view of everyone. And it was recorded. And so I'm going to start with myself. And um, the reason why I want to start there is because this is how I came to this point to talk about business as activism. The first few days for me, it was kind of business as usual on the outside, but there was this undercurrent of just immense sadness, confusion. There was just a bunch of mixed emotions about how I was feeling. And by Friday, so George's death happened on Tuesday and by Friday, I was just out. There was like nothing I could do. So if you follow me, there was a post that I wrote and I said, I don't have answers because I didn't and I was heartbroken and afraid for my my boys and um, their hearts, not afraid for their lives, let's get that clear, but afraid for their hearts because every time they see that, the thought is that could be me, right? My, um, I have a 21 year old son and he was like, I've never been this afraid before. Like to see somebody, to see that happen to someone and no one can do anything about it, just afraid. You know, I have a 16 year old son who right now, all of his friends, all of whom are white, I'll just call it like it is. And this isn't a racial um, training. I am gonna get into the training, but I want you to know where I was emotionally when I came to this conclusion. My 16 year old, all of his friends are wanting to go do something right now and kind of just hang out. Well, last night there were hundreds of people perched on top of buildings with guns, looking for looters that likely look like him. <laughs> He's like, no, I'm not going anywhere. That's fear, right? I'm not sending him anywhere because that's wisdom. Here's what I want you to understand. Like most people in the world, I was emotional. And when I wrote that post, I said, you know what? I realized that I must lead. It's who I be. For most of you, you are leaders. You're leaders of your communities. You're leaders of your tribes. You're, you're leaders of your families. You're, you're leaders. 
It's who you are by design. But what happens when the leader doesn't have the capacity to lead? Where is the world then? And so I sat back and I said, you know what I need to do is I need to start by leading myself. I need to take a beat and slow down and tune into the frequency of wisdom. And for the next two nights, my sleep was restless. But I woke up, I slept well on Saturday, and I woke up on the anniversary of the Greenwood Massacre, which I'll tell you about that in a second, because it has um, real meaning to waking up and realizing that in my confusion of not knowing what to say or how to lead or, you know, I don't want to seem too militant as a Black woman and all kinds of stuff, you know, the same feelings my counterparts are feeling about not wanting to look political. I was feeling it too. Didn't know what to do. Didn't know how to be. Should I be angry? Should I be sad? Should I, you know, all the emotions were raw. And I woke up with this clear understanding, your purpose has not changed. And so I want to tell you that your purpose and your calling has not changed. I am meant to lead other people to create generational wealth. And what I realize is that my business is my activism. Why? Because there's all kinds of activists. There's all levels of activism, right? There are those who are actively on the front lines and there are those who are funding it, right? There are check writers and there are protesters, right? There are those who are educating and um, teaching people. And then there are those who are the caregivers and the support system, the ones feeding people. So I want to start by just sharing with you this, this truth and this principle that I live by. There is no right way to lead. Your way is the right way, as long as it's rooted in love and abundance and not lack and fear. And this is how I got to this point. I saw people, including myself, afraid to lead, afraid to take a stand for what they believe in, whatever that is, because they were afraid to lose business, possible clients, being judged, all kinds of things. And what I realized is that money is kind of the answer to that. Because if your business is making enough money, you'll never be afraid to take a stand for anything. If your business is making enough money, you can give to the causes that you believe in. If a hurricane comes, you can send a plane full of food and supplies and all of those things. And so my, my, my answer to everything is to get money in the hands of good people. I'm going to circle back to Greenwood Massacre, because I don't think a lot of people know this because it was a pivotal moment for me to realize it was on the 99th anniversary to the day of that massacre. Erased from the history books, we called it Black Wall Street. It was one of the most affluent and richest black cities in America. In 1919, it was burned down to the ground. It was so affluent, there were businesses, banks, homes, over 3,000 residences. Right after the Reformation, we thought, great, we get to participate in the American dream. It was burned to the ground, over 300 bodies, 300 deaths. That town was so wealthy that a dollar circulated in that town 81 to 100 times before it ever left the city. And what happened was is someone said, no, no, you don't get to participate in the American dream and it was burned down. So my awakening to the fact that economics is my act activism. And for most of you watching me, economics is your activism as well. We got to get money into the hands of good, good people. And for that to happen on that day was significant to me. I will never forget it. I have a date for my awakening. And I'm not playing with this. And so I don't ever want you to have to make a decision about what you can stand, choose to stand for or give to or say or not say, being afraid how you will be perceived ever again because of money. Because where is the freedom in that? Where is the power in that? Money gives us options. And now more than ever, it is a necessity that you and I, good people like you and I, whether you black, whether you're white, I don't care what nationality you are, 
make more than enough in our businesses. Here's some facts that shape this problem and why I feel like this is a plight for me. In my world, coaching, consulting, which most of you who are watching me, that's the world you're part of. You might be in direct sales, not sure, okay? But only, actually, let's not even talk about my world. Let's start with, let's start with um, businesses as a, as a whole. In America, only 87% of small business owners ever even cross the six-figure marks. They, they Only 87% of small business owners ever get there. And here's the thing, six figures is not even enough to make sense to be in business. Ask me how I know. Because when I was trying to get to the elusive six figures, I thought when I got there, everything was gonna change. And I got there and I was like, whoa, <laughs> that's not enough, right? Less than 4% of small businesses ever get to seven figures. And that number for women is even smaller. And that number for black women is even smaller. That's why I said my success it is a rebellion. And so I want to pass that along. Now let's get back to the coaching and consulting space, right? The transformational space. First thing I want you to understand, because I need you guys to understand these numbers so that you can get clear about what it's actually going to take for you to create the kind of business that allows you to have those choices. I'm talking about absolutely being wealthy, rich, and abundant, and not just love and light, but money. In the transformational space, just under, it's not even 20%, it's nearly 20% of full-time independent contractors, coaches, and consultants earn six figures or more. Only 20%. So if you're watching this and you're at six figures, you're ahead of the game. You're ahead of the game. All right? Only 20%. The second thing I want you to understand is revenue potential for us as independent contractors, consultants, coaches in this transformational space, I want to say this again, revenue for us, the ability to make money is uncapped. There is no law that says you can only make this much money. There is no law that says you can only charge X for X. Yet and still, most people never hit six figures. Why is that? Why is that? I believe it's because of two reasons, and this is what we're going to dive into today. Grab a pen because I want to agitate you a little bit. I want to wake you up to reality so that we can begin to make a freaking difference in this world because we can't if we're struggling. We can't if we're stuck. We can't if we're part of the 80%. We absolutely cannot. It's going to take money in the hands of lawmakers. It's going to take money for politics, it's gonna take money to fund all of the stands that people need to have in order to, for us to see the change in the world. And it's not going to be easy. I'm not gonna pretend like we're just all gonna one day wake up and be singing Kumbaya with each other. It's probably gonna get worse before it gets better. And that's just the truth. Here's the two main reasons why I think this is so that 80% of us don't ever even hit six figures. Let's not even talk about seven figures. It's because of what we've normalized. It's because of what we believe is possible. We've normalized struggling. We've normalized just enough. We've normalized that it's gonna be an uphill battle and take us X amount of years to get to seven figures. We've normalized that multiple seven figure, $10 million a year, $20 million a year businesses aren't for people who look like me. Yes, I'm talking about black skin people, even though my skin is brown, right? We've normalized this. What we need to normalize is that we have uncapped potential. We need to normalize the making, the receiving, the charging of big money. We need to normalize businesses that seven figure is the norm. Right. A hundred thousand dollars in your business or below. If you want to make a difference in the world and you're you want to choose business as activism, it is no longer an acceptable level of play. And that's a commitment that you need to make to yourself. The other thing is mindsets and beliefs. 
about money, right? I'm going to talk about that a little bit. My friend, Stephanie Sinclair, who is an amazing coach who kind of popped the cap off of this for me, um, is going to be talking about that in a series. I saw that coming up just about how we think about money and how money comes to us. We've got to shift what we believe about money, the shame around it, the shame around making it, the shame around spending it, all of that kind of stuff. We've got to normalize and actually open ourselves up to say, you know what, I'm worthy to have more than enough. And as a matter of fact, it's not that I'm just worthy to have more than enough or to live in overflow and abundance in my life and in my business. And I'm not saying more than enough to pay your bills, buy Louboutins, say you, say you have a good job. I'm talking filthy rich, normal, right? We have to normalize this stuff. Open yourself up to be worthy of receiving and having and holding that much money, expanding your capacity as a leader to lead financially too. So you have freedom of choices. So how do we do this? How do we do this? The first thing is we got to tell the truth. We got to tell the truth about money. You got to get real about money and where you are with it. So the first thing I want to tell you, and I just talked about this a little bit, is normalize making massive amounts of money. Write that down for yourself. Normalize, make, normalize making massive amounts of money. I remember when I would make big money before, what would happen is I would make a lot of money and then my insides would freak out right? My, who I was on the inside would freak out because I'd never had that much money before. And I wouldn't make money for a long period of time. And I never realized why that was happening because it wasn't normal for me. I didn't know what to do with it. I was also a little afraid of having that much money, right? I'm telling the truth. Tell the truth about where you are with money, right? I asked someone one time, what is the difference between who you were as a person when you were making 100K a year and who you are now as a person who does 100K months and sometimes 100K days and sometimes sells a million dollars from a stage when speaking at an event. And this is what he said to me and it changed my life. He said, I had to change my relationship to what I believed was a whole lot of money. Some of you believe 100K is a whole lot of money, so it's far off, right? You got to get to the point where 100K spends like $100 to you, right? Under, not spends like, but you understand that feeling is the same. The same way you're comfortable with a $10 bill, be comfortable with millions. Change your relationship to what you believe is a whole lot of money. And that's just the beginning part, right? Normalize making massive amounts of money. It's not a us and them thing. It's a me. I hear people all the time. I'm like, what do you believe about rich people? And they're like, rich people are this. I don't think rich people are bad. And I'm like, listen to me. I am rich people. They are me and I am them. Shift what you believe about making a whole lot of money. The second thing, admit that you desire to make money, real money, big money, to have it in your bank account, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Tell the truth about that. Stop saying crap like it's not about the money because guess what I realized this week it is. It's absolutely about the money, absolutely. You know, how do you get people out of offices that don't serve this human desire that we have for equality? money because money is what got the people in there that aren't serving the human equality that we have the the human desire that we have for equality to be one money so you got to tell the truth admit that you desire to have a, lo a lot of money and give that money a purpose again more than buying just shoes and surviving more than just paying your bills, more than just saying I'm the, you know, the wealthiest person in my family. Times like we are in right now woke me up and reminded me of my desire to have a lot of money. And you must tell the truth about that. You'll never have it if you don't. You'll never have it if you don't. So I want to play a little game and do a little exercise with you because money loves purpose. And the third thing I want to share with you today is that 
you got to get into your reality about the numbers. You're never going to get there if you're just trying to focus on just enough. And so someone asked me a really powerful question a couple of months ago, and it took the lid off my eyes and made me realize that it's not only um, a desire of mine to make millions in my business, but it's almost a necessity for me to do that in order for me to just live like I want to live, to be able to give where I want to give and show up how I want to show up, not have outside influences or possible customers dictating what I can and cannot say. So here's how you want to get real with the numbers. The question they asked me was this, what would it cost me to be me 18 months from now? You notice I didn't say five years from now. I didn't say 10 years from now, because some of y'all think it's going to take you 10 years to get to a million or 10 years to jump into multiple millions or to even hit that three years to hit that six figures. It could be done just like that. You got to get clear, right? What would it cost me to be me 18 months from now? And so I began to write some things down and I got real with numbers. Now we can't um, spend the time today to go through it all, but I want to give you, I have it written down here in front of me. I want to give you some ideas of things you want to write down. So start with the standard of living, the causes you want to give into, the investments that you want to make. You start there and then work back your revenue goal from that. So what's your mortgage, right? Um, life insurance new hires that you want to bring onto your team, team members. So many people make decisions because they can't bring team members on. So their income and revenue is capped exactly where they are. Um, your vitality and your living. For me, I've got things on here like a private chef, a driver, a personal assistant, right? If you know me, I, my phone could be right in my face and I don't know where it is. Put those things down. Look at the monthly costs of you being able to do all of those things. Any other personal expenses. I like I like first class travel and spa days, right? What what other personal expenses do you need to put in there? And then the thing that we forget to do is additional profit. Like where are you going to invest your additional profit? And I don't know if um, my friend LaShawn Holland is on this call, but if you don't know her, you need to follow her because she is a wealth builder. She will teach you some of this stuff and it's powerful. LaShawn Holland is her name. Um, She's all about helping people build generational wealth. And, it, and she has an incredible gifting for breaking this stuff down. <clears throat> but the profit that you have in your business, you should have assets that pay for all the things that you want to do in the world. I learned that from LaShawn, right? So this includes investments, venture capital. This includes property, all of those things. Put that in this, where does my money go? Who, who, what would it cost me to be me in 18 months? Right. So I totaled all of this up and that minimum amount for me to do all the things I want to do in the world is sixty four thousand dollars a month. What am I going to do with eight thousand thirty three hundred and thirty three dollars a month if it costs me sixty four thousand to be me? It shifted something for me. It shifted something for me. So you got to get real and know these numbers. Right. And then once I added taxes, so that ended up being about seven hundred and sixty two thousand dollars a year. And then I added taxes on top of that because you got to pay, you know, you got to render to Caesar what Caesars. And it's about one one point two million dollars. Most of you have have not had that reality check yet. What does it really cost you to be you? A year from now, 18 months from now. You're making decisions from where you are, not from where you desire to be. You're creating revenue from where you are, not from where you desire to be. You're setting goals, revenue goals, um, milestone goals from where you are, not from where you desire to be. All right. So think about how you would really want to live and get real about those numbers. So once you get clear about money, so the money part of it is normalize making lots of money, admit you have a desire to make a lot of money, give that money a purpose and get real about those numbers, get into reality about those numbers. The next step is get clear about the support structure you need to make this happen. Listen, I'm smarter than the average bear too. I'm brilliant. I can Google with the best of them and I am the figure it out girl. 
But that kept me stuck for a long time. It kept me stuck at the same level because what you know now, and what got you here won't get you where you're trying to go. And it definitely won't get you there rapidly. So I want to share. I want to share how to rapidly start increasing the amounts of revenue you bring into your business. And I want to show you how to rapidly blow your own freaking mind with what's possible for you. Be open to it. Be open to it that 18 years from now, you could have a million dollar business if you're only at six figures right now, right? That you could transcend whatever levels you've been at. I My desire is to get money into the hands of good people. Your business is that vehicle, but only if you allow it. So how do we rapidly accelerate this? First thing, and as part of the support structure to make it happen, is you want to dial in your next level business model. So you have that number, right? I have my 1.2 million. How do I dial in a business model that supports me doing this simplified? Listen, you don't have to spend the next year, two years, three years scraping by, trying to figure it out, trying to make it work, nor should you. You really want to do this as simply as possible. One of the most powerful things that I teach my clients and the people who work with me, my students, is everything I know about collapsing time and accelerating their results. A lot of it is internal and an inside game, but you also have, have to have a business structure that supports the kind of revenue that you want to make. And it doesn't entail necessarily having, you know, 10 staff members and, um, you know, crap ton of funnels and all of these moving pieces to it. You could go from where you are to 50, 100K months like that. What you want to learn how to do is how do I simplify my business model in a way that helps me create my desired results in record time? Oftentimes, the most if you're a coach or a consultant, the simplified business model is only like two offers, maybe three not a bunch of little things here and there because it's that focus. I learned this very powerfully from a mentor who challenged me to do the same thing over and over again for 12 months. He said, this works. I don't want you to change it for 12 months. Now, again, I'm smart and I get bored. Creative people normally do. We get bored with what we're saying. We get bored with what we're doing. And so I said, yes, that year I doubled my revenue. I did it again and again and again. I stuck with that same business model for three years. And what it taught me was the power of simplification and um, repetition, consistency and repetition. You got to simplify and be consistent. That's what creates momentum, right? You want to implement a strategy that doesn't require you to be all over the place. It doesn't require constant time and attention. This like the simplification process and the focus and momentum process is what has my clients creating their annual income or turning it into their monthly income. So you need to dial in a next level business model that's simple. The reason why we won't do simple is because we believe that hard work equals success. That is not, no matter what they write in books, the ultra wealthy know that leverage is what equals success. They're always leveraging other people's labor, other people's money. It's They're not leveraging their um, work capital. It's the working class that thinks everything has to be hard. Here's what I want you to adopt. It gets to be easy. It gets to be easy. Number two, in order for you to make this work and, and do it quickly, like quickly get to your next level, you want to identify or you want to actually, what you need is this next level identity shift in you. Next level identity shift in you. What I want you to get about this identity shift, it's about how you see yourself. Because how you see yourself has the most profound influence and impact over your success. Because you will never out earn your self-worth nor outperform who you believe yourself to be. I used to have a story running in my head that little black girls from the hood don't make that kind of money. I even had somebody tell me one time, you'll never live in a neighborhood like that. And so this, this recurring story in my mind that in order for me to do it, I was going to have to flip over backwards and do something different. 
Today, I'm like, look at me now, <laughs> right? Your, your current identity and how you see yourself is creating your current reality. And it's creating your current results. You're never going to be able to realize that big vision you have unless you elevate and recode your own identity and how you see yourself. Remember what I said about normalizing, making money. Because here's the truth. Who you be right now in this moment, the only reason why you don't have it is because you don't have the capacity. You can't handle it. You're going to have to upgrade and recode. No system, formula, strategy, nothing I say, no plan, no writing down the number numbers or course is going to work to maximum capacity if you can't handle what you say you want, that multiple millions, billionaire, whatever it is you want to be at a soul level. And in order for you to get it right, what you have to begin to learn how to do is embody your next level. It starts with knowing the numbers. Who would I need to be 18 months from now? Like, what does it cost me to be me 18 months from now? I'm making decisions from that place. I'm stepping into that leadership. This is your foundation. This is your foundation for generating the most revenue without shame, without guilt, and without killing yourself. Period. In order to elevate quickly with your business model and upgrading your identity, my, up, my identity upgrade did not only come from me. It came from surrounding myself with people who were already doing what I desire to do and who saw the brilliance in me and reflected it back to me. I was able to borrow their belief in what was possible. They turned that possibility into probability by showing me that can be done and reflecting back to me that I could do it too. So the, the second piece of this system that you want to have in place that will allow you to do this and move your business, move the needle on your business to the next level is you need a next level community. And in my, in my tribe, we call that a courage container. The truth is this. You already know that you could create a legacy business or a dynasty business. Right. You know that you could. But the thing that you really, really know is if you could do it on your own, you would have already done it by now. Right. Most people try to put their heads down and do it by themselves in a vacuum. We need to connect together and elevate each other. You know, it's one of the things I've been hearing people talk about and say right now during this time. And there's lots of women of color who are saying, hey, put us on your stages. Right. Invite us to the table. And it doesn't have to be an overt thing. Here's my thing about diversity in business and diversity in your life. It starts with actually having real relationships with people who don't look like you. Right? It's not a contrived thing like fill out an application and let me look and see where are the smart black people that I know because you're looking from the outside trying to make a judgment as to whether or not my business is as successful as yours or more. And because of bias, you automatically probably assuming that it's not. I'm going to stop right there. <laughs> but if you had a relationship, then you would know that there are plenty of successful women of color, black women out there, men as well, too, um, who are qualified to be on those stages and teach people. Right. So it starts in relationships with people who have done what you're doing and we pull each other up for the ride. It's why you go places and you see, you know, the same people and friends on each other's stages because they're working in community with each other. For most of you, you don't have a key to the door. You're not invested in those communities. You're not hanging out with anybody. You're trying to figure it out on your loan, on your own. Stop that ish. Surround yourself with people, not that you're comfortable with because they're at the level that you are and you feel like you can talk to them or that they're below you and you can save them and teach them something. You don't need to be the smartest cookie in the room all the time. Scare the hell out of yourself and put yourself in communities where people are doing far more than you, you thought possible. They're blowing your mind. They are selling a million dollars from the stage and they're selling 25, 30, 40,000, $50,000 offers from the stage. And you're like, wait, how sway? I thought we could only sell nine, 997 offers from the stage. It shifts what you believe is possible. It's like pouring high octane gasoline on your results. 
Every new level community that I've ever stepped into elevates my belief in what's possible and what I already knew was possible. I remember 100K months seemed far off. This was just a few years ago where I was like, man, I'm trying to have my first 100K month. That year I did $86,000 was the most month, the highest month I ever had. And I was really sad about it. And someone um, reminded me that in order to have a million dollar business, you only it's only $83,000 a month. And I was like, oh yeah. So now I have the makings in my DNA to do that. But not being surrounded in community with people who have that understanding, right? You don't get that kind of elevation. Now 100K months are my normal. It's a new normal for me. It's not like, oh my gosh, I had a $100,000 month. It's like, okay, we did that. Cool, that was what it was expected. Yes, and of course. When you're around people who don't believe in what's possible or expand your, your vision of what's possible, you limit your capacity to grow, thus limiting your, your capacity to earn, thus limiting your, your capacity to actually use your business as the vehicle that moves the world forward and having impact in a greater way, period. And that's what I'm here for, guys. That's what this whole conversation is about. Getting you to the place where you can be that kind of person that donates 100K to a cause that you believe in and it feels like you just donated 100,000. I mean, 100, right? Where 100K feels like $100 to you. That's what I'm here for. I'm here for it 100% and I'm leading the charge because again, money in the hands of the right people will affect change. But first, you gotta get your life right at the current level. I'm gonna repeat what I said earlier and I'm gonna go back through some of the comments you guys wrote. Get real about money. Tell the truth about how rich you wanna be. Know your numbers. Normalize making and investing big money because money is a replenishable resource. It absolutely is. And if you want to get to your next level as quickly as possible, you got to fortify a, a support structure around you that makes getting there inevitable. That includes dialing in your next level business model for rapid results, getting clear on who you be, how you show up in the world so that it's powerful, that you command money, um, that it calls in the best clients. And then making sure you have this next level community in place so that you can do this sooner rather than later that elevates what you believe is possible and makes it probable and even better, just plain freaking normal and expected for you, period. Um, and as someone saying that I want this for people if I didn't make an invitation to you. So here's my invitation to you. If what I'm saying resonates for, me, for you, it resonates with you and you know you need support in these areas, and, but you just don't know how to get there, I'm willing to strategize with you about it, okay? I also have programs that you can step into where I help my clients with these things. So there's there's three ways that I'm gonna give you to do this and it's completely up to you. And again, this is if my style resonates with you and if you really want this, because my, my desire right now is to actually create millionaires in business, right? Over the next few years. Like if I can do, if I can help a hundred people, good people become millionaires in the next five years, that would blow my mind with what's possible. And so that's the journey that I'm on right now. So if this resonates for you, and even if you're like, I'm trying to make my first hundred K or my first million dollars, reach out to me. So you can go to my website, which is commandmoresales.com If you want to go the long way, and I didn't put it up, um, commandmoresales.com. If somebody could type that, that would be amazing. And it'll take you through the application process. If you don't know me, it'll give you some time to sit there and get to know me from my clients' words, from my case studies and testimonials so that you can see the work that I do in the world. Um, or you could just comment 100K months in the comment section, and then I'll come back through all the comments and reach out to you, and then we'll connect. If you desire to and we're connected in that way, you can also shoot me a message. So whatever feels good for you, reach out to me because here's what I don't want. I don't ever want your hands to be tied again where you can't do something or make a decision or a choice in your life because of money. The other thing is you get to decide what your leadership look like. Hey, there's LaShawn. I was talking about you. Um, you get to decide what your business looks like. Hey, follow LaShawn, guys. She's an amazing wealth builder, an amazing teacher at it. And the stuff that I'm talking about today, you're going to need somebody like her in your corner. All right. Again, if this resonates with you, commandmoresales.com. 
or type 100K months. Thank you to all those leaders who are typing that in for me. I appreciate you. Or you can simply reach out and message me and we can start a conversation. I am not going to let anything that's happening in the world silence me. Yes, I'll take a beat and I'll deal with my emotions because as leaders, we have to have the capacity to move in this dichotomy of the highs and the lows. Life is that. There's birth and there's death, right? We talked about this before with COVID-19. There's sadness and there's joy, right? And the only way that you can have that capacity to move is if you're, you're certain about your purpose and your calling and you are filled to the brim with with everything that you need to so you can pour out from your overflow. When you are depleted, you cannot do that. That is what will make you silent. That is what will make you hold your hands, have your hands tied together where you can't be the change that you seek to have in the world. And I don't want that for anyone. All right, guys, I'm going to end this live stream. Thanks for hanging out with me. Again, I don't take it lightly that you did. And I'll be back over the next couple of weeks, more often, just talking more about this. How do we create wealth? How do we create massive wealth? How do we do it faster? How do we up-level who we're being? How do we shift and normalize massive amounts of money flowing through us so that we can have it and send it out into the world for the causes that we believe in, all right? I'll talk to you guys later, bye. Thank you so much for watching my show, my channel. Here's what I want you to do. If you really love what you've been listening to, I want you to subscribe to my channel and leave me a comment. No, no, really, leave a comment, like right now. I'm not gonna stop talking until you leave a comment. Seriously, leave a comment.